Hailing from Los Angeles in the early 80s, the band Armored Saint shared more in common with the new wave of British heavy metal bands like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and Saxon than hair bands that ruled the Sunset Strip. While they would be influential in the metal underground scene and signed to a major label, it hasn't always been easy for the band as tragedy would hit close to home. Stay tuned for the full story of Armored Saint. Armored Saint would be a highly influential metal band in local circles, even though they didn't break big nationally. Formed in 1982 by the Sandoval brothers, including guitarist Phil and drummer Gonzo, they soon added vocalist John Bush, bassist Joey Vera, and guitarist Dave Pritchard to the lineup. The name Armored Saint came from the 1981 medieval fantasy film Excalibur. The band would record a five-song self-titled EP that caught the attention of Metal Blade Records, who released the song Lesson Well Learned on their compilation record titled Metal Massacre 2. The band would soon enough sign a deal with Metal Blade in 1983 before landing a major label contract with Chrysalis Records the following year. It was a strange business move given that Chrysalis Records didn't have a lot of metal acts on their roster, and as you guys will find out, it wasn't a smart decision. Armored Saint would release their first album through Chrysalis in 1984 titled March of the Saint. And while it would be met with positive reviews and the song Can You Deliver got the video treatment, which paid homage to Mad Max and received some airplay on MTV, overall it was a frustrating experience for the band members who felt like their sound was too commercialized and sanitized. Produced by Michael James Jackson who previously worked with KISS, Joey Vera would recall in a 2006 interview with Full and Bloom Music how the band fought with their producer from the start, revealing our producer was never there or always on the phone, but we didn't quite see eye to eye with him anyway. One day he told us he didn't like Black Sabbath, and from that day on it was like, you just don't get it. Suddenly we had all these outside people messing with our things, slowing tempos down and making things overly polished, trying to manufacture a sellable item. And the producer and our manager let us spend over $300,000 in our first record, and to this day, we're still in debt for that one, he'd say. According to the same interview, Vera would admit that the label seemed happy enough with the sales of the group's first album that they were allowed to make another record for Chrysalis. Their follow-up release would be 1985's Delirious Nomad, and it would see the band team up with Ozzy Osbourne producer Max Norman to try to get the sound they wanted. Unlike their previous record, the band didn't do any music videos for Delirious Nomad, as Vera would reveal in the same interview. Just as Delirious was being finished, MTV cancelled their heavy metal programming, so we decided not to make a video at all, save the money and put it towards tour support. Six months after Delirious came out, MTV added metal programming back into their program. We were pissed, he'd say. During the recording of the album, founding member and guitarist Phil Sandoval would leave the group. In 1987, the band put out what would be their final record with Chrysalis titled Raising Fear. Due to the departure of Sandoval, the band would record the album as a four-piece. Raising Fear would represent probably the lowest point in Armored Saint's career with their label. Vera would reveal a number of factors working against the band, including the fact that their label was undergoing major personnel changes, they lost their A&R man, Chrysalis wanted to bring in outside songwriters to help the band write more radio-friendly songs, and finally, their label was against letting the band tour in Europe, which the members of Armored Saint felt was the key to widening their reach. Following the release of Raising Fear, they would be dropped from their label. The album would also represent a dark milestone for the group, as it would be the final album that guitarist David Pritchard would play on, as the musician would receive the tragic news that he was diagnosed with leukemia a few years later. His cancer would be discovered as the guitarist was taking a test to see whether he would be a suitable candidate for a strong acne medication. Pritchard would pass away in February of 1990, partway through the writing sessions for their next album. And with no label backing them, and Pritchard having passed away, the band almost called it quits. But Metal Blade Records would come to their rescue, signing them once again, and urging them to put out the record. It was during this time Phil Sandoval rejoined the group, and new guitarist Jeff Duncan was added to the lineup. Working with Alice in Chains and Jane's Addiction producer David Jordan, the resulting record would be 1991's Symbol of Salvation, which is probably the band's most respected album of their career. And to the members of Armored Saint, it was the record they've been trying to get out of their system for almost a decade. Symbol of Salvation featured a more diverse sound in their three previous releases, highlighted by the song Last Train Home. 
frontman John Bush would admit that the song wasn't a direct tribute to Pritchard, even though the lyrics seemed to have some relevance, Bush would sum up what the album meant to the band, telling LA Weekly in 2018, Sometimes the identity issues probably mess with what we wanted to accomplish and what we felt like we should accomplish. It was only around Symbol of Salvation that we started not to really worry about fitting in with the scene. We just said, let's be us, and I really think Symbol of Salvation is a perfect example of that. It's probably the most important Armored Saint record. Its legacy is probably enhanced by it being the last record where Dave Pritchard was part of the songwriting. You can still feel the emotion of us trying to hold on. It has a lot of mystique to it, he'd say. And despite being creatively happy, the sales for Symbol of Salvation weren't there. The band felt like despite everything they had gone through, they should have been much bigger than they actually were. And they would run into problems with their management, and frontman John Bush would soon join Anthrax, leading the band to break up. Joey Vera would tell Full and Blue Music, After Symbol was out for a year, we started to have problems in the band. We also began to have more problems with management, and just a general sense of more stress was in the air. We were at the point where we were not sure if we could keep going. Then John got the call. He originally said no, but then they called him back, and he had to reconsider, and he and I had many conversations about it. I felt that he might regret not taking the offer if our band just fizzled out, so I gave him my blessing to make a move. Once he did, I was quite relieved as I was so tired of the frustration surrounding Saint. It was time to move on, he'd say. But prior to breaking up, the band did make a quick appearance in the 1992 film Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. During their time apart, the members would pursue other musical projects, but seven years later, they reformed. In 2000, Armored Saint released their first album in nine years with Revelation through Metal Blade. It was during the mid-2000s that John Bush would rejoin Anthrax, along with Vera, and the band wouldn't put out a new album of material until 2010. And during the 2010s, the band's musical output has increased, with them releasing several albums, and just this past year they dropped another record with Punching the Sky. The band has also released a trailer for their upcoming documentary featuring the members of Metallica and many other members of the metal community. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take